Follow American Hostage on Amazon Music to binge all eight episodes right now. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Starring John Hamm, Carla Gugino, Joe Perino, Dylan Baker, and Becky Ann Baker. Directed by Sean Christensen. This podcast is based on a true story of a hostage crisis that took place in Indianapolis in 1977. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 1. The Man with the Gun. The seven-second delay for live television was introduced in 1975 by NBC so that Richard Pryor could host Saturday Night Live without the network getting fined for all of his obscenities. The delay would also be useful, we discovered, if a man were to be shot point-blank in the head, live on national television. Indianapolis 911, what's your emergency? Yes, this the police? This is 911 dispatch. Is yes, Lieutenant Collins there? Uh, no, sir, he's not on dispatch. Well, who you got there, who you got there, ranked high enough to take this call. I can help you, sir, if you can tell me what you yeah, problem is. Yes, you stand up. Do you think sir. I won't do it, you stupid son of a sir. bitch? Sir. All right, all right, I'm going to tell you now, and you're going to listen good, and I don't repeat myself, so you listen up now, you understand? Yes, I'm listening, All sir. right, I've done a thing, a real serious thing, the kind of thing you aren't used to hearing about, I bet. I've taken a prisoner. And I've got him here wired shotgun barrel strapped to the back of his head. And this ain't no crank call. You understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I understand. But you say you've got something wired up, a shotgun I've got a real to... deal. 12-gauge shotgun wired up to the back of his head. And anything happens to me, it goes off. And if he moves, it goes off. And I got it so there's a hundred ways it goes off and only one way it don't. And that's keeping me alive and good. You understand? I understand. And this ain't no crank call. Yes, sir, this is not a crime I don't call. ever have much for anyone to take. And these motherfuckers find some way to take it all. And I'm mad as hell. I swear to God, he's almost as good as dead. He's never sir, been closer to dead than he is sir, right now. can you please uh, uh, talk to me and lower the gun, I am please, talk- if you I am know. talking to you, sir. And I ain't lowering the gun. Can you tell uh, me how many people you've got with you I over just there? got one. One's all I wanted. The call is who I got. The son of a bitch. Sir. Sir. Now, I'm a mad, mean motherfucker, lady. I and I'm the real deal. Yes, sir, I understand the real deal. And I'm sorry I gotta bother you all like this, but it ain't Can right. you please tell me where you 129 are? 129 Canton Street. Canton, you said? 129 Canton Street on the fourth floor in Dick Hall's office. And I'm gonna tell you again, the way you got this wired is you kill me, you kill him. My hand goes back and my fingers go limp and he's eating shotgun shells right, out of the I, back of I his understand. head, I swear to God. I understand, sir. We're gonna send over some of our fellas and see what we're we can do We're gonna get this settled, him. baby. Well, please don't kill him, and we're sending police on their way. You're goddamn fucking right. Radio Indiana. WIBC. Indianapolis. For me, there are three tenets of journalism. One, don't make it personal. Two, don't pick a side. And three, don't become the story. I broke all three of those in the span of a single phone call. Good morning, I'm Fred Heckman, Tuesday, February 8th, 1977. A burst water main on Stanwood Drive shuts down a hardware store and a family restaurant, and the Pacers see a win against the Chicago Bulls as they adapt to their first year in the National Basketball League. We'll speak with Slick Leonard as the team prepares to face off with the New York Knicks tomorrow night. And speaking of special occasions, today Gary Wilcox will be coming in to finish up this program while the station kicks me out to celebrate my wedding anniversary. Station owner Jim Hilliard was nice enough to let me come in and keep my perfect attendance record, and he's also nice enough to keep my marriage afloat. So Barbara, honey, I'm coming home. We'll be right back with Gary Wilcox, more news, the weather, and sports. For myself, Fred Heckman, at the WIBC studio, I hope you all have a terrific day, and I look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Sing a little song, you might sing it wrong. So wrong, so wrong, you might sing it wrong. Bring it on, Dublin, I'll sing it wrong. Sing a little song, you might sing it wrong.
when WIBC News Editor Lou Palmer gave the 7 o'clock news, bringing for them a kind of order out of the chaos. Morning, Fred. Ronnie! You know, I hear they make ties in different colors. Yeah, I know. I know. How you doing, Gary? Your beauty sleep serves us all. Okay, okay. What was I looking for? Yes, I got that. Okay. Ah, there he is. You are out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, Jim. That was... That was quite the sign-off, Fred. <laughs> now my wife's gonna ask where her proclamation of love is. Well, it's not like she was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she would appreciate it. Well, I think after 32 years, she's heard everything I have to say. No. You're a workaholic, Fred. That takes a toll on other things. It's been a slow year. It's been a fast decade. You got Swede Savage, the ABA Championship, you got Elvis friggin' Presley on the phone. And you're going home to tell your wife, I love you, you are my everything, nothing is more important than you. You hear me? <sighs> yeah. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. When I started working at WIBC, America was rapidly changing. I was doing stories on McCarthyism, the counterculture, the riots, the oil crisis, Vietnam. But by 1977, if you tuned into WIBC and heard Fred Heckman, you didn't get the news. You got stories about leaky ceilings or lost kittens, maybe the occasional corporate misconduct. I don't know if the news lost me or I lost the news, but something was missing. Jim? Yes, come in. Hey, Jim, did you hear about the thing? Uh, no. We got something developing downtown. Something developing? Like, like something big? Uh, it's, I mean, it's not small. Well, whatever it is, keep it away from Fred. He's still in the building somewhere. Keep it away from Fred. I mean, it's a hostage situation down at Dick oh, Hall's place. Shit. He's gonna find out. Dick Hall? The mortgage guy? Yeah, that guy's got a gun strapped to his head. Oh, I sent man. Paul, I sent Tom, I sent uh, every uh, cop in a five-mile radius. Is down all right. Uh, Fred is out this morning. Uh, he's going to want to chase his story. Just keep it between us. It, Jim, it's kind of a thing. I mean, he's going to uh, find uh, out. Just don't tell him. Okay, let's just say hypothetically I bump into him. I don't care. You send him to me. All right. Hey, Dan, turn on Wish. Ronnie, get Gary out here and prep him on the new copy. Gary's broadcast. Well, wait for commercial and then prep him on copy. Barbara? Wow, I don't believe it. The last miracle of Jim Hilliard. <laughs> and before 8 p.m. I'll have to send him a fruit basket. <laughs> He'll think you're calling him a basket case. <laughs> oh my, hmm. you look terrific. You smell terrific. I'm trying something new. Oh? Mm -hmm. Soap? <laughs> no, hey, no hitting. You have to be nice to me today. Yeah, I'll be nice if you're nice. Uh, evidently, he made a bad real estate deal, and he's going to settle it. What is this? Did he come in with a shotgun? How did you know when we had it? Who is that? Um, I've heard ten different pronunciations today. Tony Karitz is something. Yeah, they're just letting him wander around outside. Gun right out in the open. I've never seen anything like it. They say what this guy wants yet? I, I don't know. It, really? I don't know. Well, if they get any closer, he's going to shoot that man's head off. Isn't that Dick Hall's place? Looks like it. He did our mortgage. Yeah. Oh, I'll be right back. My God, they're giving him a car. What? They're giving him a squad car. They're going to let him drive around in one of their cruisers. That's what happened in New York, right? They they they, they drove that guy Jesus to the airport. Christ. Who is this guy? And caught him there? Huh? I, I don't know what you're talking about. From the movie. About the bank robbery. Oh, right. Yeah. Jane, Jane, can you get Jim on for me? What do you mean he's out? 
I hear him in the background, Jane. You're the worst liar. What's this thing downtown? This hostage situation? It's Dick Hall. I mean, we know this guy. Do we have anyone on this? Gary, are you kidding me? Uh, uh, okay, thanks, Jane. Richard Hall disappearing into the cruiser with Richard Hall in the driver's seat. Uh, Caritzas has not lowered his gun. Funny looking little fellow, isn't he? He's like a, the troll right out of a storybook. Looks like he was never taught to smile. Here. Wait, we're exchanging now? You know I don't like waiting. Well, it better be a pearl necklace. Just open it. Oh, honey. This... Yeah? This is tremendous. You like it all right? Elgin's been out of business for near ten years. I know a guy. Honey, it's perfect. It's it's just absolutely perfect. Come here. Hmm. All right, your turn. Let me, uh... Hold on. It, uh... Don't give me that look. It exists. I promise. <laughs> and I get a whole show, just, too. Just hang on. I have it. It's here. I know it's somewhere. Damn, it's in my desk. You can get it tomorrow. No, I can get it right now. Fred. I'll be I'll be right back. I won't be 20 minutes. We got... Uh, what time are the reservations? Noon. Plenty of time. I'll be right back. You look amazing. Uh-huh. I'll be right back. Uh-huh. Well, I've known him all my life. I've had trouble with him all my life, more or less. What kind and of trouble? Nothing. I, I just be a little panicked there. My whole life, all I ever wanted was the story, the big one, the one that puts you on the map, the one that takes the country by storm and hits the national zeitgeist, capturing America's hearts and minds. That was the dream, my dream. And then one day, like a turbocharged V8, the Indy 500, the dream finally hit me. And all I can say to that is, be careful what you wish for. Now holding Richard Hall hostage in his own apartment, which he claims is wired to blow. Now we're currently watching the police home the building. Jim, we're holding Gary over. Okay, thank you. Jim, eventually we need our news director. Mark, Gary can handle it. All right. Okay, Jim, if I see him, I'm not going to lie to him. Oh, God, he's coming in. Oh, Jesus, he's yeah. coming back in the building. I'm out of here. Jesus I'm out, I'm out. Christ My hands are clean. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie to him. Jim, what's the story, Jim? Uh, it's, it's, it's nothing. What's the story, Jim? What? What are, you, what are you doing back here? Why is the entire IPD parked outside Esther House Mortgage? Well, there, there's a bit of a story developing, but... What kind of story, Jim? <sighs> All right, what do you want me to say? It is a bit of a situation. Jim, that's a hostage crisis. Yeah, it's a bit of a hostage crisis. When did this start? Earlier this morning. Some guy burst into Esther House with a shotgun and he's holding Richard Hall as hostage. Jesus Christ. He's got something he calls a dead man's line. A what? It's some kind of murderous contraption that binds him to Hall. The police shoot him and Hall dies too. So he's basically handcuffed himself to his hostage. I was just about to call Chief Gallagher for confirmation. I'll call him. What? Uh, no. This is important. So is your anniversary. Don't be like that. So I suggest, either way, go home. We got Gary in prep right now. Gary? Yeah, Gary. Heavier guy? Enviable hair? I think you hired him. Gary, are you kidding? I'm here. I'm staying. Gary can handle it. Bullshit. It's a hostage situation, not a centenarian's birthday at the nursing look, home. Look, look, I don't care if you stay or go, Fred. You want to stay here, that's on you. Come on, you can't expect me to ignore a story like this. I don't expect you to do anything. But as your friend, I advise you to place your family first. I'll go down to the scene, introduce the story, and then zip right home. Fred. This job is a promise. No. It's a promise to the American people that I'll be here no. for them when a story no. breaks. To guide them through the Fred, noise and tell them the truth. The only thing you've promised the American people is that you're going home to your wife. But I, So, it's your day off. We pay Gary to cover the news. Mm -hmm. It happened on his watch. Jim. Why are you even back here? Well, Barbara's gift is in my office. Well, that sounds just a tad convenient, Fred. Oh, don't give me that. Either way, I suggest you get the gift 
and go home. Fucking Gary, are you kidding me? Fred, it could be over in five minutes, or it could be five days. Either way, I'm sure you'll be covering it at some point, but Gary is down there. And that's the way it is. You know you're a real asshole sometimes? Being an asshole doesn't keep me up at night. It's fucking up the job that does. Yeah, yeah. Get whatever you headed in to get, and then get out of here. Tell Gary not to get comfortable. I want confirmation. All right, where did I put it? I gotta put it here. Uh huh. All right. As a journalist, my code is simple always take the call. A ringing phone doesn't sound the same to an ordinary person as it does to a journalist. If a phone rings in a room with a reporter and they don't pick it up, they're not a reporter. Simple as that. You always take the call. Fred Heckman, WIBC. Yes, Mr. Heckman. Uh, this is Sheila Smith with the Indiana Bell Telephone Company. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Well, I am calling because a man named Anthony Karitsis has been attempting to ring into the WIBC offices, and he's been asking for you specifically. Uh, Karitsis, you said? Yes, sir. He's the man on the news. Yes, ma'am. Uh, did he, uh... Did he say what he wanted? He says that he needs to talk to you because you will understand all the goddamn shit I have to say. That's a direct quote. I see. Okay. Uh, and how many calls has he made? Uh, 14 in the past hour. 14, you said? Yes, sir. 14, I see. Yeah, right. Well, uh, I tell you what, if you could give me that number, I think I might be able to take him off your hands for you, Miss Smith. Of course. Okay. Um, are you ready? Uh, yeah. It's uh, 555 mm -hmm. 0981. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, would you like me to tell him that we'll be calling if he calls back? Uh, you know what? Why don't you. Uh, you can tell him that I have his number. All right. All right. Have a good day, sir. You do the same. Oh, Christ. I don't want none of that shit anymore, you hear me? I swear to Christ, if this is just more bullshit lawyer talk, I'll chuck his head out the window so goddamn fast, Sparky, well, I'll be asking for an autograph. Hello. Hello, this is Fred Heckman with WIBC. Bullshit. No, sir, this is Fred Heckman. This is really Fred Heckman? Yes, is this Mr. Karitsis? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can you can call me Tony, sir. I, I, I called so many times I thought I broke your phone. Well, that's what they've been telling me. Yeah, I listen to you every morning, sir. Every morning. But I, I wasn't able to today. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's very flattering, Tony. We try to, uh... It's important to us that we do our best for our listeners. Well, now it's your turn to listen, sir. Okay? You're going to help me straighten this shit out for me, Mr. Heckman. You know, I trust you. Just man to man, I want to say I've been listening to you for near 20 years, and I really respect you and, and, and how you distinguish yourself from the other newscasters. You know, there's no fucking fluff with you. And I respect that. Because I'm fucking sick and tired of listening to the radio and hearing nothing but fucking fluff and Rod Stewart. I'm fucking sick of Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart's full of himself. Okay, uh, well... Thank you for the compliment, uh, Tony. Uh, uh, what is it that you think I can do for you? I've been talking to these dumb motherfucking cops and lawyers all day now, and they just can't keep up with me, and they can't get anything right. And I figure if I'm going to get out what I need to get out, I have to invest my story in the proper fucking channels, and that means you, Mr. Heckman. I see. I want an interview. I, I, want, I want to give you an exclusive, something live for all the people at home so they, they get it. And they fucking know just what happened. Because I don't trust anyone else to get it out. You know, I've been watching the news reports on the TV all day, and the things they've been saying, so many things are bullshit. And the record's got to be set straight right fucking quick. You know, I've seen that they put my mugshot on TV, and I don't know where in the hell they got that. I don't think I ever look worse. But what they're doing right now is straight-up character assassination. And I need the record set straight. Right now. And you're that avenue, Mr. Heckman. You know, they trust you. And I trust you. And what you say might as well be gospel. So you're gonna help me. 
I see. You want an interview? Yes, but I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't like repeating myself, Mr. Heckman. I don't like repeating myself, so don't make me repeat okay. myself. Okay, Tony, I, I, I think that, uh, I think I can understand your perspective, and, uh, that you might be worried about what everyone is saying about Saying what they're lying about? Because it's all lies. I've been maligned with no defense whatsoever. Okay. Uh, is, uh, is, is Mr. Hall with you? Yes, Tony? sir. Yes, sir, he is. I've got him here, tied up to the ass end of a 12-gauge. And the way it works is, I go down, if those pigs shoot me, then the gun goes off. I got Dick Hall on a dead man's line made myself, and he goes where I go, and that's the same for heaven or hell. I see. Can I talk to him? Why? Well, I'm a reporter, Tony. I like to get the full story, and that means I have to check in on the other person involved in all this. Well, he's not going to give you the proper account. You can't trust the son of a bitch as far as you can throw him. Well, it makes me feel better to know that I've covered my bases. Now, it seems to me that you're someone who can understand why a man would think it's important he do all of his job and not just half of it. Yeah, no, that, that's right. So, if it's okay with you, I'd, I'd like to speak with him. Okay, here he is now. Dick, it's Fred Heckman from the radio. He wants to talk to you. Um, Mr. Heckman, I'm here. Everything he's saying is true. Uh, he's got me all wired up. Hey, Fred, tell, and, tell uh, him you're a son of a bitch. Tell him. I'm a son of a bitch. Now you know I ain't playing, Mr. Hickman. No, no, no. I don't think you're playing, Tony. Uh, you seem you seem like a very serious man. Goddamn right. Goddamn serious as it gets. Now I'm a mad, mean motherfucker, baby. And I don't ever have much for anyone to take. And these motherfuckers, they find some way. They find some way to take it all and I'm mad as hell. I swear to God, he's almost as good as dead. He's never been closer to the dead than he is right now. Okay, okay. Let, let's just hang on now, Tony. Let's let's you and me talk. Why don't, why don't we talk? Okay, you got me here on the phone. We just... Let's... You're just going to have to give me a second to adjust to the situation. Can you can you do that for me, Tony? Hey, I can do that. <laughs> well, I just, I've never done anything like this before, so I, I hope you can find a way to be patient with me. I've been patient with this motherfucker for four years. I got patience for you, Mr. Eckman. I know you're not going to do all that psycho mumbo-jumbo horse shit they've been trying to pull on me all day. Well, I'm going to do my best to get you what you need, Tony. I really appreciate that, sir. I got a lot of respect for you, Mr. Hickman. I really appreciate just how upright you are and all that. Well, thank you, Tony. Now, when are we doing this interview? Well, Tony, I tell you what, I think we might be able to work something out. I'll, I'll need to talk to my producer, Jim, to get everything squared up. It can be a, a bit of a process to get everything together, but, but I do want to help. Tony. Let me ask you something, Mr. Heckman. Go ahead. You know I'm a serious man. I certainly do. You think I'm gonna do it, and I don't mean if I have the potential to do it. I mean, I want to know if you know I'm gonna do it. Well, Tony, I think you are mad enough about this that to you it would make sense to do it. Now, I don't know exactly what you're mad about yet, and I think that we can get to the bottom of this without anyone getting hurt. So my answer to your question is, I don't know. I do know that I want to get to know you. I want to hear your side of all this. And that way, it's a question we don't need to answer. Tony? Tony. I like you, Mr. Heckman, but if you don't have an answer for me about that interview in one hour, I'm blowing Dick Call's head off and I'm sending you the parts. Oh, my God. Next time on American Hostage. 
What in the hell do you mean you've already talked to him? We are Dick Hall's best shot at survival. You can't go down there. The news says he's got his apartment building wired to blow. Fuck the whole corporation. I know how to rig up a shotgun and I know how to rig up a bomb. Not a single one of your predecessors would have sat on this. You're making yourself the story, Fred. Do you have a wife and family, Fred? I sure do, Tony. Does she know you're talking to me? Tony, was I always a part of your plan here? Call me soon, Fred. Don't leave me waiting now, you hear? The next episode is available now, or you can binge all eight episodes right now on Amazon Music. Or you can listen ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Written by C.D. Carpenter. Directed by Sean Christensen. Produced by Adam Volerich and Brendan Hubbard. Executive produced by John Hamm, Sean Christensen, and Gabriel Mason. Starring John Hamm, Carla Gugino, Joe Perino, and Dylan Baker. With additional performances by Sean Christensen, James O'Connor, Christina Brucato, Robert Rowe. Sound design by Brandon Jones. Composed by Darren Morsey. Editing by Thomas Beach, Sean Christensen, and Adam Volerich. Recording and engineering by Dave Williams. Mixing, mastering, and additional editing by Nick Masidi. ID reads by Natalie Prass. For Amazon Music, executive producers are Morgan Jones and Dave Easton. Senior producer is Eliza Mills. Special thanks to Jacob Bronstein, Phil Sanchez, Chris Davis, Jack Parker, Marcelino Villalpando, Stephanie Walkneen, Vlad Norman, Vanessa Rebert, Sam Petherbridge, Kale Bittner, Alice Zoe, Trevor McNeil, Ty Jacobson, Rich Sherman, Marsha Louie, WIBC, Wish TV, and Creative Artists Agency.